All right, guys, welcome back to the next installment of the IDX Pro VLF detector project. So, here's a close up on the screen of the portion of the circuit board that I've populated, and we will zoom out and uh, I'll point to a few of the parts before we look at the oscilloscope. All right, guys, here's another shot of the transmit portion of the circuit. And uh, one thing that I'd, I wanted to, to point out in this shot is the configuration here of the two capacitors, right? So, as you can see, I have two capacitors in parallel with the coil and they're in parallel in order to get the correct amount of capacitance so that we end up having the appropriate uh, frequency for the coil okay and we'll look at the uh, formula that you would utilize to figure that out let's take a look at the oscilloscope next and we'll see what the transmit waveform looks like. Alright guys you can see on the screen we have a, a relatively nice sine wave continuous and we are at uh, 6.54 kilohertz frequency and the amplitude is about 11.6 uh, 11.7 peak to peak okay guys have a shot of the tester here hooked up to the transmit part of my double D coil and you can see what we have there for inductance as well as resistance Okay, like I said, it's just a uh, double D coil. I've only got half of it constructed thus far. So just a quick shot of the um, spool of wire that I'm using for the transmit coil, right? And we're still hooked up to my little tester. Turn this on test it one more time to see if there's any disparity nope same thing okay that's what the coil looks like right now it is not uh, shielded as you might see and uh, we'll get to that eventually so let's take a look at the schematic all right, guys, as uh, I said, we can take a real quick look here at the schematic. Here is one of the many schematics for the IDX Pro. Um, it has a, a few components I've noticed that are dissimilar to the circuit board from Silver Dog. Um, it's who I got my IDX Pro circuit board from so yeah so this is approximately what we're looking at here for the transmit portion of the circuit right I'm not gonna get into this too much it's it's pretty basic couple of transistors we see the capacitor and some resistors here's where we attach the coil and our capacitors that will tune okay and I think that's about enough of that one All right, so let's take a look here 
at some of the generalities that are involved with making a DD coil for the IDX Pro. You can see this is this is pretty generic and this is for a, a 27 centimeter DD coil, right? So this is assuming a few things here. It's assuming certain wire sizes, right? You have 0.7 here for transmit and receive 0.18. I didn't necessarily follow along with those, but uh, what is of the most importance are the uh, amounts of inductance. You can see transmit here and receive and off the top of my head I don't recall what mine was but you just saw it in the video so you can compare that uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's pretty close okay and in addition to that we are looking for a transmit frequency of 6.5 kilohertz which I do remember exactly we did get that so in this instance if you make it exactly according to these specs with a one microfarad parallel capacitor you should get pretty close to 6.5 kilohertz if not you tweak the capacitor and um, there are some very easy online online um, formulas that you just plug your numbers into and they'll do it all for you. All right, so as I mentioned previously, I said we were gonna take a look at one of these online calculators. So this is the one that I like to use. Here's the, we the website up here on the bar and it's a resonant frequency calculator. Here is the uh, longhand version of the formula. If you would like to do it by hand, you just go have at it. Um, but it's so simple to just plug your variables in here and you can click a button and there you have your resident frequency and there's various forms of it you come down here and do the same thing So here we are, I'm going to solve for capacitance, so 6.5 uh, kilohertz inductance of 570 microhenries and calculate and there we have 1051 nanofarads. So that, that's very easy. Um, I did mention before, uh, if you're having trouble uh, coming up with exactly 1051 nanofarads you uh, get as close as you can with one capacitor and then just put another in parallel with it uh, capacitors in parallel are additive okay very simple all right guys that's it and uh, on to the next one thanks for joining me yet again